What's up, powerful people? My name is Eli, you can call me Super Kid, and I'm here to welcome you to part two of West of Loathing here on Super Kid Plays. Powerful people, if you're excited for this episode, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and uh, leave any comments you have for me in the comment section. Also, please share this video with anybody you think might like it. Those things help out a ton. Uh, okay, yeah, we can just, we can just map our way back. Let's, uh, let's head over to, in this ep in this last episode, we, uh, got the horse from here, Thousand Snakes Gulch, and we're gonna go to Boring Springs Boneyard now. We are hostling out here. Our founder, Zephaniah Boring, 1806 to 1885, he was actually a really interesting guy. <laughs> There's a dirty mug here. I recovered that mug. Benjamin Crockett, 1320 to 1364. He showed up way too early. That's so funny to me. Uh, Beauregard Skeleton, or Skelton, sorry. Captain, 3rd Cavalry, 1820, 1866. This grave is really noisy. Yikes. <coughs> Excuse me. A skeleton. You're not getting past it without a scuffle. A scuffle it is. He's got 10 HP. And I'm gonna hit him with a flaming bean. <laughs> Looked awesome. The skeleton collapses into a pile of loose bones. You gain 3 XP. Um. Oh, I have 9 XP. My bad. Real quick, let's check these out. Timothy Cochran, 1855, 1895. Elizabeth Cochran, 1887, 1895. Silas Cochran, 1895 to 1895, a baby. That's Susie's family. Your pulse quickens as you get near the spooky translucent horse. You approach the weird semi-transparent semi -transparent horse cautiously so as to not startle her, though you quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there. Hi. I'm a friend, okay? <laughs> that's a little strange. How did, how you did that without... That's a little strange how you did that without opening your mouth. Let's pat her on the nose. You pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Let's pat her on the nose again. Yep, still cold. Brr. Feed her the oats. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but she just sort of stares right through you. Brr. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Try the oats again. You hold the oats out again, but the horse continues to ignore them. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them. But I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? <laughs> Is that a yes? Weird. Okay. Add some grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionlessly at them, then eats them. <laughs> with that, she glides away in the direction of the town. Bizarre. In indeed, it truly was. And now, to the ore hole mine. Oh, I might have missed some stuff. No, I think I've got all the mugs so far. There's still some meat ore in this cart. Let's dig through it. Oh, nice, 65 meat. This definitely does not bear close scrutiny. Okay. Hmm. The inside of the ore hole mine. It's instructions for the cargo elevator. The mechanism is labeled Cargo Elevator Control. A poster on the wall behind reads, Level 1, Blasting Cap Storage. Level 2, Plungers. Both kinds. Level 3, Tools. Let's go to level 3. Oh, an unrefined meat nugget. Nice. Let's pick... It's a toolbox, but it's locked. Let's pick the lock. You manage to unlock the toolbox, but the needle is ruined in the process. Most of the tools inside are rusted away to nothing, but there's a pretty nice crowbar. Nice. And I'll equip the crowbar. Um, let's go to level one. Uh, 
These crates are labeled blasting caps. The period is part of the label. That's why it's inside the quotes like that. Okay. You pry one of the crates open with your crowbar and grab a blasting cap. Okay. Now let's go to level two. Plungers. The sign lied, though. There's only the one kind. Got a detonation plunger. This looks dangerous. <laughs> Let's hook up a plunger to it. Fighting against your instincts for self-preservation, you've hooked up a plunger and strung it to it a fair distance away. All right. This makes me nervous. You press the plunger and nothing happens. You forgot to hook up a, bl a blasting cap. Son of a bitch. There we go. You see the dark horse, barely. Hey there, girl. It's okay, I'm a friend. Winnie. The horse shies away from you, though in this case, it's more like cripplingly introverted away from you. Let's reassure her. Ah, oh, come on, don't be like that. Look, I brought some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that wasn't a very comforting thing to say. Let's pat her on the nose. As you reach to pat her nose, the horse ducks and steps further back into the shadows. Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> you take a handful of oats out of the bag and hold them out to the horse. Here you go. Yum yum. Snort. She sidles away from you wearily and makes a surprisingly good attempt at hiding herself, hiding in her own shadow. Come on, please. Eat the oats myself. Look, they're fine, see? You take a handful from the bag and toss some into your mouth. Oh, it's like the roughest, blandest breakfast cereal you've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food, don't ask. You smile to show the horse that you're fine and realize that you've unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Jeez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you wearily as you re-enter with a cheerful wave. See, perfectly fine. Pat her on the nose. The horse hunches her shoulders and seems to shrink slightly as you pat her nose. But she doesn't actually flee, so that's something. There's a good girl. Winnie? Feed her the oats. The horse finally seems relaxed enough around you, so you can offer so you offer her a handful of the oats. Wearily, begrudgingly, she eats them. Then she gestures at something behind you. You turn around to look, but don't see anything. When you turn back, she's gone. Well, okay then. That was tight. Let's go back to the town. Uh, we've rescued all of your horses. I don't know how you spotted her hiding in that mine, but thanks for sending back my dark horse. Sure thing. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe. Thanks for your help. Anytime. Find it. Thanks for finding my crazy horse. He was eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. That's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra for you. Thanks. Um, you said something earlier about an injury? Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the showroom. Don't ask how, it's embarrassing. I was gonna get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself up in her office. Said she wouldn't take anyone except nurse... Wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. Is that an actual nurse, or... I'm pretty sure she's just being sarcastic. I see! Well, let's head over here. Get lost. Offer whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. I didn't know she makes house calls. All right, hold on. You hear a rattle as she unlocks the door. Enter the house. Doc Alice looks to be about in her 50s. Her hair is graying and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp, if bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey. Stat. She craps, cracks open the whiskey and f fills a small flask she takes out of her pocket. 
Then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here, me or you? Okay, point taken. This vanity doesn't look like it sees much use. Preen a little. You grab a pair of tweezers and pluck some of your more unsightly eyebrows. You gain one experience. Hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want to. Not that they're gonna do you, you much good in this doomed forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheerful, Doc. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks except for a few. Leaf through Legend, The Legend of Curly's Meat, The Life and Works of Fred Ferguson, Goblinoid Tongue, A Primer. Primer, Primer, I'm not sure. Uh, the Life and Works of Fred Ferguson. This book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it, you mostly find just, just find lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad, so it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. <laughs> At least there are some useful appendices in the back and some diagrams of appendices. Nice. Let's read the first one, The Legend of Curly's Meat. This book tells the story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meat, secreted in the hidden sense, not in the extruded, oh, secreted, I got sense, in the western desert by an old cow hand named Curly Butterfield. Okay. And let's read The Goblinoid Tongues, a primer. You start flipping through the goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but you eventually get so engrossed that by the time you take a break from reading, several blurfs have passed, and you also know that blurf is the goblin word for hour. You've learned to speak goblin, sort of. And we got the, cobli the goblin tongue perk. Nice. The stove is spotless. Either she is really compulsive about cleaning, or she never cooks. Uh, wow. Shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? You would think, yes. Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Um, is everything alright? It depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. And I can't talk and drink at the same time, so... She glares at you meaningfully. So what's, uh, uh, I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart, and you ask, what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking? Why don't you go ahead and pick one, and I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? You, you haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggering around like puppets with half their strings cut? Looking like, looking to take a bite out of the living? Oh yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. It's nice to get some outside confirmation that I'm not losing my damn mind. But how is that even possible? It isn't possible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Oh. Ouch. Doc Alice turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it, but... Well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterward and looking for revenge. That must be pretty rough. Rough? Buddy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients, it's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh. Um. Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. Hmm. Doc Alice sighs exasperatedly. What now? What's the deal with, the t with all the TNT? It's so when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits. So small, there won't be nothing left to come back. Seems drastic. Drastic? Hell. No way am I taking the risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. Well, one more thing. Do you have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. A rumor? What is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. Uh, anyway, what I heard is that there's a fella out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly, he's sending magic out into the world somehow. Magic like the bean slingers use? Never heard any bean slinger raising the dead, have you? Her scowl deepens. Had to be one hell of a can of beans. <laughs> Alright, so there's a necromancer out there. 
You approach the weird Cactus Man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, Cactus Man. Howdy yourself. And the name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cac I drank too much cactus beer, and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. Oh. Does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know, being a cactus? Oh! <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation process inside the cactus part of me keep me pretty drunk. Most of the time. I guess it's a mite. It is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. I, you don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? I do. I'll give him the newspaper. You give him the newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now let's see here. What can I do to return the favor? Oh, I know my shovel. I left it behind the outhouse at Warhol Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Thanks. Behind the outhouse at Warhol Mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. Sure thing, Bill. <laughs> uh, let's go to Orhole Mine. This is where Bill said to look. Look behind the outhouse. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Now that this... Not that this would have been a funny thing to kid about, I guess. <laughs> he got a shovel. Excellent. I believe there was something I could dig up in here. Yes. A silver nugget. Right on. Let's check if there's any other stuff to dig in these places. Now that we have the old shovel. Hey, look at that! We got mostly scabs, that's what I was talking about. Uh, you've been poked by so many cactuses that your body has built up an entire extra set of skin capillaries just to deal with the constant tiny puncture wounds. Plus five max HP. Excellent. Uh, here we go. Oh, we can just fight this guy. Uh, yeah. Let's dig up his grave and fight him. It's not horrible. 20 HP. Um. Let's see here. Um. Hmm. You used the armor spell. Oh yeah, and I still get to hit you. Nice. I don't know if that actually did prevent me from getting hurt more, but it, I hope so. I think it might have. Nice. All right, one more. Boom. You put a stop to Captain Skelton's unnatural animation. 12 experience, old cavalry saber, and a gold tooth. Gold tooth. This was in the ground for a very long time, then in someone's mouth, somebody's mouth for a very short time, and now it's in your backpack. All right. How much does the crowbar do? Five to six. Five to six. All right. Doesn't really make much difference, does it? All right. Back to the town of Boring Springs. Is there anything to dig up in this thoroughfare area? Oh, yeah. Nice. All the uh, horse apples. Nice. That's a little like, extra experience. What are we at XP-wise, by the way? 31. Damn. Um, out foxing. That sounds kind of cool. Let's do out foxing. Need more things to shovel up. Yes. Oh, and a recovered mug. Nice. Nothing for now, dude. Howdy. 
Howdy, good to see you again, Zoth. I found these mugs. You hand in the recovered mugs and collect your bounty. Thank you. The woman glares at you. Are you Susie Cochran? How... How'd you know my last name? I saw the graves in the cemetery. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and I couldn't do nothing about it. The bartender said it was cows? Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used to ranch cattle back before, well, before they came home. Pa didn't make it, but Ma and I managed to rebuild. We ranched pigs instead, and she left me a place, me the place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch, and they attacked a couple days ago. Happened so fast, I didn't even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cows smashed in the front door, and a fire started out back by the root cellar. House went up in blazes just like that. What did you do? I... There wasn't anything I could do. I couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire. I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... She drains her glass. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry. She refills her mug with a bottle from a bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. What will you do now? Head west, I suppose. Nothing keeping me here and no desire to stay. I can't live without leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It was Ma's rifle. It's all I got left of... of anybody. Where is it? Left it at the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it for me. Yeah, I'll go get it. And we discovered the Cochran Ranch on the map. Nice. Let's go do that. Let's go get Susie's rifle for her. Cochran Ranch, established 1891. The water, all the water in this trough has boiled away. Susie's ranch house has burned to the ground. Ooh, I can hear some, some bovines. This outhouse is the only thing still standing. Something behind this door is making some pretty awful noises. Go through it anyway, y'all. Varmint skin and knife. These pies were not safe. True. This thing looks angry. You're not going to make it to that safe without dealing with it. Let's deal with it. Has 15 and 50% 50 hot resistance. Well, that's not great. Um, let's do that. And smack him. Ow. Hey, I'm on fire. That's not cool. What the hell, man? What the hell, man? You defeated that nasty cow skull floating in a cloud of flame. Hooray! Hmm. Varmint skin and knife, huh? It's the Cochran family's gun safe. Let's grab Susie's rifle. Can't open this? It's lame. Alright. Find my rifle yet, stranger? Yep. Here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her the rifle, and she r roughly scrubs her sleeves across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name? I'm Zoth. Thanks, Zoth. Can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment, then looks back at you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want me to tag along when you head west, just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. Ooh, we got 30 seconds left. Damn. That's not enough time to do nothing. Well, in that case, powerful people, I think we'll just wrap things up here. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode <coughs> we're almost done with the uh, Boring Springs portion of the game uh, in the next one we'll go see the Scherf and what he's up to but uh, 
yeah, that's for next time. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, leave any comments you have for me in the comment section, and please share this video with anybody you think might like it. As I said, in the next one, we're going to go see the Sherf. Uh, but until then, powerful people, my name is Eli. You can call me Super Kid. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Peace. And love. <laughs>